Now, a strange thing is the, Amer um, the Americans attacked um, Afghanistan January the 17th. Yes? <clears throat> um, you know, George Bush's father. Do you remember that story? Actually, please tell me again, uh, tell me who attacked whom? I I'm not sure. Um, know. You know, George Bush's father um, did the first attack um, to Iraq in um, 1991. To Iraq, January yes. The 17th. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, at that time, in 1990, the news was that Japan's economy was going to go ahead of the United States. Yes. And um, a lot of it depended on the oil price. <clears throat> so um, Japan definitely would have gone ahead. And Japan was mysteriously investing in South Asian tigers at the time through dummy corporations. And um, these South Asian tigers mysteriously, um, you know, happened to be Muslim. Indonesia and Malaysia. I remember this in the 1990s because at that time I was only a young child. My father, um, you know, because there were business people and I wanted to play around with money with these South Asian tigers. And nobody knew that China was going to move forward. So at that time, Japan had the cash and Japan would have been the, the nation that would have invested in China instead of the US. Yes, in the 1990s. Right. And just to be clear, when we are talking about South Asian tigers, are you referring, what are you referring to exactly? Actual animals I'm or the economy? No, no, no. Economies. <laughs> yes, economies. Yes. Okay. Yes. When they say South Asian economies. So the Americans were investing through Singapore. Yes, as well as the Japanese. But um, the thing is, um, um, the thing is, um, Japan has such a stronghold over there. So in 1991, the US invades Iraq on January the 17th. And the oil price, you know, practically goes up five or ten times. And the nation that's going to be affected the most, yes, um, is Japan. Japan has to pay for it all. Since then, Japan's economy has not moved forward or backwards. Nothing. So a year later, yes, what is so strange is that a year later, you can check on January the 17th. No, um, um, January um, the 9th or something, um, George Bush goes to Japan. Yes, and... Um, he mysteriously falls sick on top of the Japanese prime minister. And then um, he, he, they say he collapsed for 17 hours. I've sent you the paper. Then a year later, I think it was um, a year later, um, the earthquake happens. This is to do with September the 11th. Many people don't know. Yeah. Um, not a year later. I think two years later, um, there's an earthquake in... Um, in um, no, uh, um, two years later, there's a, an earthquake in um, Los Angeles. Yeah, it's called the Northridge Earthquake, January the 17th, 1994. Notice um, this is in the Pacific um, near Los Angeles, Northridge. Yeah, it's easy for Japan to get to. So I've, I've sent you this. Um, you can um, share this information with people. So that's on January the 17th. And the size of the earthquake and the photographs of the earthquake are suspicious. Yeah, if anybody looks at the photographs, when you get to Google, Straight away, they'll show you a highway with a bridge. When you just look at, um, you, you know, Google Images, um, mm -hmm. it's like um, the famous um, photographs of the Northridge earthquake. This is 1994 we're talking about. Now, um, the thing is, January the 7th, America attacks Iraq. And um, Japan's economy has not moved forward since then. And it was just about to overtake. Um, the Americans, yes, and they would have invested in China. And then mysteriously, around in the 1990s, um, Western investment and American investment in China increased like crazy, the enemy of the United States. This is to do with Tartaria. Many people will not realize this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, one year after that, immediately one year after the Hanshin earthquake, yeah, uh, no, Northridge earthquake on January the 17th, 1994, this is going to be really suspicious. People will start to see the connection. The moment you go to Google Images, what are you going to find? You're going to find the um, Kobe earthquake, Kobe City, um, or, or Hanshin earthquake. I've been to that place. Yeah, I went to check it out because I thought, hey, what the hell is going on? Yeah, I already knew it was suspicious. So um, the thing is, that happens on January the 17th, 1995. Yeah, and it looks normal until... Let's have a look at this. Um, the Kobe earthquake, yeah? Normally, yeah, um, wait, let me um, just send you the facts. The Kobe earthquake um, um, started at, um, you know, in Japan, and it started at 8.46 p.m. universal time. This is very important. 
Yeah. 8.46 p.m. universal time. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, when somebody looks at this 8.46, everybody will know. Now let's get to September the 11th. Yes. September the 11th started. Um, the first attack was at 8.46 a.m. Yes. Many people know this. Yes. Yeah. 8.46 right. a.m. Mm -hmm. Let me um, um, just um, get this. Um, 8.46. Let me just see now. So, or something to do with that. Wait, let me just see. It. September the 11th. 8.46 a.m. <clears throat> was it 8.46? Um, 8 8.45, 8.46, something like that. Yes? Mm -hmm. It depends. Um, some websites will say 8.45, but generally they say 8.46. I'm looking for it online. Um, this one, history.com says 8.45. Um, it says the, the moment of impact. But um, the media at that time, I remember, ah, now let, um, that's um, history.com. Ignore history.com. I found the U.S. government official website. Yeah, let's stick to the official history that they're going to be teaching people in 100 years' time. 8.46 a.m., yeah? Uh, but um, um, the, um, um, what do you call it? The attack on the World Trade Center. Now, what many people don't know, all this, all this seems normal. Yes? So now when we start having a look at this, it looks all normal. Uh, everything looks normal until let's have a look at who built the World Trade Centers. Many people don't know these things. They don't have a look and they've got no idea about this. The World Trade Centers were supposed to be the mosque for commerce, the international mosque for commerce. I'm being serious here. Yes. And um, yes. who designed it? It was somebody who was working for the Bin Laden Corporation. I'm being serious here. Um, I've sent you the information here. It was designed by Yamazaki-san, who's Japanese. Yeah. Mysteriously, the Americans let the Japanese design it. Yeah, who's working for the Bin Laden Corporation. And there were many Japanese involved. The Japanese. Now, um, what many people don't know is that here I'll send you a picture of Mecca. And um, here is a picture of the 9-11 of the Memorial, Mecca is in the shape of a cube and the 9-11 memorial yeah, is in the shape of a cube. But how did they decide to, what were the definitions of, of Yamazaki? Yes, um, is he called Yamazaki? Uh, or have I got the name wrong? Yes, Yamazaki-san. Yes, um, how did he design um, the World Trade Centers? The World Trade Centers were, were supposed to be a replication of the Islamic Mecca. This is serious. And he, uh, um, he was working with the Bin Laden family and all this in um, Saudi Arabia for many years and the, the, his team, the Japanese team. And um, the, uh, um, the trade centers mysteriously, you know, um, September the 11th. Now, many people don't know much about Japan. That's why um, my book, Coronavirus, mentions it a little, but, um, um, but you have to um, read all the other books. The Matrix book is important because it shows this, but um, let me just show you... Um, um, more about um, September the 11th, what the meaning is in Japan. September the 11th is a date that the Japanese cannot forgive or forget. Now, the young generation don't remember, but um, the Japanese elite are never going to forget. Yes? Uh -huh. Yeah, they're, they're, they're never going to forget. Now, it's like, can you imagine right now, um, you know, if somebody walked in into... Um, it, um, if somebody walked into Russia right now and they arrest Vladimir Putin, if the Americans do that, if they did that on September the 11th, the Russians will never forget, never forgive that day. You know this. Right. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now the thing is, let's have a look at World War II. Yes. They claim there was atomic bombs, but um, they practically firebombed um, so many cities in Japan. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows why the Japanese were fighting in World War II. Nobody has a clue. Uh -huh. So now the thing is, um, you know, Osama bin Laden, uh, whoever they were, and his team, they turned around and they were repeatedly, yes, they repeatedly many times, all these so-called Muslims and their organization. They told us the organization's called Al-Qaeda, but that's a scam because um, it's in my book, Coronavirus, um, the word Al-Qaeda, it just means the toilet. Yeah. Oh, really? The toilet? Because I, I, I had heard it means I'm the base. Serious. I didn't yeah. know it was the toilet. Okay, that's great. <laughs> No, 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 no. It means the toilet base, you know, where you sit on. Okay, toilet yeah. base. Okay, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's um, a correct pronunciation now. So the thing is now, um, 
and um, we've got um, an organization called the toilet and these boys are um, bin laden's boys the toilet boys yeah and um, they've they've turned around and said well, um, we're doing all of this because you attacked japan in 1945 yes I've just sent it you. Uh -huh, um, yeah, uh -huh. Repeatedly mm -hmm. talked about Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Osaka, Tokyo, 1945. So now let's look at Japan in 1945. And um, so now the thing is September the 11th, the Cube 19, all of this, and the Old World Order. So Japan officially surrenders on, on um, 15th of August, 1945. It's called the Vict VJ Day, Victory Over Japan. Yeah. So it surrenders on the 15th of August, and then Japan... Um, um, uh, it, it makes the announcement, and then the Japanese foreign minister, um, he has to meet the American invaders 19 days later. Yes, 19 days later, after Hirohito, the emperor, announces the, the surrender, they, they sign the official surrender. Notice it's 19 days. Yes, mm -hmm. then the Americans, yes, what do you call it? Uh, um, I forgot if it's they issued the arrest warrant or is it the day of the arrest? Either they issued the arrest warrant or they arrested um, Hideki Tojo on um, September the 11th. Now, I want you to imagine Japan as a nation. Yes, everybody knows the Japanese are proud. So are the Chinese. Yes, so are the Russians. You're going to walk into their country and you're going to arrest their leader? Yes, September the 11th. Yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you see that now? Ah, um. Let's see. Ah, yes, it was the arrest order. The order of the arrest was on September the 11th. And um, did they actually arrest him on that day? On September the 11th, nine days after the official surrender. 9-11. Nine days after the after the official surrender. On September the 11th, 9-11. So 9-11 and again 9-11, they surrender. Now, the maths is important. Notice the mathematics. I'm going to teach you a secret about the maths. Yes, because many people, they think they know the secret. But the secret is a lot bigger. Yeah, because they're focusing on looking at the mathematics. Let's say something happens in America. Something The Vietnamese focus on their things. The Muslims focus on their things. The Russians focus on their mathematics. So the thing is, um, you know, um, um, General MacArthur, he orders the arrest. And um, I've sent you that information. What do you think is, uh, how do you think the Japanese are going to respond to this? Well, they're not going to be happy about it and hold a grudge, most likely. Yes. So if now there's... let me send you um, yeah. the meaning of um, Al-Qaeda. Yeah, the, of course, um, you know, uh, in new books, they're just going to say it's the base. But the original meaning, it doesn't mean base. It means a basin, like a toilet bowl. It means it's a toilet, basically. Yeah, you understand? Great. Yeah, so yeah. The, uh -huh. on purpose, they say base because they don't want you to know. Of course. Because yeah. whoever gave that name is laughing because they don't want you to know. Saying, <laughs> yeah, yeah, all these Americans yes. and Europeans, they think it means um, the base. <laughs> We've just told them it's the damn toilet. And they believe it. They don't even check. These yes. people are so stupid, yes. which they are. Yes, yes, They're yes. having a laugh at them. Yeah. So the thing is, anybody who studied it, yeah, the Russians, um, they even um, officially reported the Russian government and they said Al-Qaeda does not exist. Yeah, um, by 2004. This is Pravda.ru. This is an um, official, um, um, you know, um, 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 website. So now the thing is, um, um, they said Al-Qaeda doesn't exist September the 11th. So now um, let me just... Um, um, show you um the thing. What was I going to show you? Al Qaeda doesn't exist. I was going to show you something else that's um very important. Ah, which page is it on? This is in the book Coronavirus. Uh -huh. So the thing is um 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 the less uh, the more you you begin to understand this, then you will understand there is a global war for centuries be between two sides. I was going to send you something else, but damn, I've forgotten. Yeah. And, and just maybe while I'm you're sweet. looking, I'll just insert one tidbit I had recently heard, which is that uh, the beginning of the First World War was officially, of course, caused by the assassination of, I believe his name was Duke Ferdinand or something, uh, of Austria. Yes. And, that also, Sarajevo, yeah. and that also here they were actually building a very important rail line, which would have connected, I believe, even Baghdad or something or some, something far east with the west. And again, it may very well be that there were, you know, economic reasons why this was not allowed to happen and the war had to be started. So. Ah, OK. Yes. I know you've just mentioned that, but because I found it so that sure, we don't on. get this. Of course. The Japanese government was amongst one of the first. This is in the book Coronavirus. 
Yeah, um, they didn't. Uh, the Japanese government, I mean, the entire government, uh, um, the parliament, the parliament is part of their government. Um, um, some uh, um, the opposition. Um, yes, you know, in the Japanese parliament, they were never, they will never say anything, um, you know, um, unless if it's planned. And they, um, uh, um, you can find the videos, and most of them they were deleted so many times. Um, on Daily Motion, you could probably find one last copy on YouTube. You've got to do a hard search. The Japanese government, yeah, turned around and said, hey, um, uh, um, you know, um, September the 11th is basically a scam. Airplanes can't do this. And, they're, uh, and they were saying it, saying, you expect us to believe this. And yeah. um, they turned around and said, because, you know, the Japanese embassy and their officials, there's a huge Japanese community in New York. Yeah. So they interviewed everybody and they said there were internal explosions. And um, somebody did it from the inside. But now the strange thing is, notice, we've gone back to World War II. Now, what many people don't turn around and say is, let me just show you what happened in World War II. Now, now the thing is, when you open up history books, this is what they're going to show even to the young Japanese people and to people all around the world today. Have a look at this. This is very important. It's going to shock, shock you. I sent you a picture. This is what they will show you Japanese women looked like before 1945. Can you see it? Right, yes, yes. Have you seen the picture? What do you see? Uh -huh. Well, this looks like, I would say, what would one would today call traditional Japanese garment, I guess. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to send you the real Japan, which yes. these people are hiding on purpose. Yes, before 1945. It's very hard to find this. Yes. And then the American occupation forces with their occupation government, they changed everything. Look at the real Japan. What do you see? Well, it looks a lot more Tartarian for sure. <laughs> or or Tartarian Muslim. or what else? Or Muslim. What with, else? With the... What do you see here? Here's the Japanese military with their women. And then around the time of the war, there were protests and everything. What do you, what do you actually see here? Well, I see all the headscarves and I see the patterns yeah. on their clothing. And it's, uh, yeah. the pattern is a design, but um, uh, um, it's becoming a bit clear what type of a civilization they are and they were. So now I'll send you some things because, um, of course, they're um, deleting history, so we can't find a lot of it. This is from the Japanese National Archives that um, around the time of the war or when the war ended. Yeah, um, I've sent you the um, um, pictures and from the Japanese National Archives, including um, I'll send you a translation. Yeah, and and this sh and um, here's a translation, and um, people can read it. How did women's fashion change before and after the war? Yeah, as seen in official changes and changes due to the government structure. You know, the Americans have changed the government here now. Yeah. Yes, they've invaded. Yeah. So um, the thing is that I, I've sent you um the this is from the Japanese National Ar um, Archives. Now, the thing is, um, Google translation is not very good, but you can ask Japanese people and they'll tell you themselves. It was like there was a war going on to change people's clothes. Life after the war, as seen in the public relations magazine. I've said, um, that photograph is from the public relations magazine, which is basically ordering people in schools and in the city areas. Um, um, they changed everything. Um, you know, basically, um, you know, the, um, the implementation guidelines for simplifying wartime clothing because the war hadn't stopped even by 1943 44 or 45 yeah so the um the um the thing is they said save the clothes they're using that as an excuse but the thing is and let me show you what they actually did to the clothing yes now the thing is here is a picture and you'll see a woman dressed in black totally covered yeah people call it ninja you know in the western right movies right yeah like ninja yeah yeah and, and, and then they showed, hey, you know, we've become modern and progressed, but you're still covering your legs. Then they say, this is the new um, fashion dress in schools and everything. Uh -huh. Start showing your legs and your skirts. Until, you know, Japan has totally transformed now that um, if you see the average Japanese girls. But as you can see, there is something going on. Yes, Every, um, as you can see, um, you know, like um, in England and in Europe and America, Yes, many people don't know when they separated the children uh, um, 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 and they um, um, they sent um, in many schools and um, throughout Europe, yeah, in the in the 1940s, 50s, 30s, they told people to, um, you know, um, you know, change your dress code. In schools, they were allowed to wear headscarves. Yeah. 
in the Balkans as well and in Eastern Europe. So the thing is, the fashion changes of, uh, of the world didn't happen overnight. Yes, that I'm in Japan. Yes, at first they're wearing headscarves and today uh, it's like, um, you know, they're wearing skirts. Yeah, so the thing is, many people think, think that this happened naturally. No, it wasn't natural. It, um, it, it was mysterious that it happened. And you'll see this, that this happened throughout the world yeah, when they formed these nation states. Yes? Uh -huh, yeah. Yes, that these nation states were being ordered and controlled. Yes? So now you can see the relationship between September the 11th. And you know what the Japanese are like. If anybody knows Japanese society, they don't like being told what to do. Yes? And after 1945, everybody knows that um, if you, if you um, check the Japanese riding system, it changed a bit more. The Meiji Restoration, when the West forced Japan to open up, that was after that, they had to do a lot of changes. But the Japanese had enough, Hideki Tojo and the rest of them. And they said, who the hell are these people to tell us what to do? And since, and since that time, many old Japanese people, I remember I stayed with, with some old people in Japan. Um, I stayed in their home for a month and I met many old people, yes, in, in the villages outside Hiroshima. And they were telling me stories. And, they, and this is how they said it. When these Americans came in the Western man, they brought smoking. They brought smoking into our girls. Because of this, our family system broke down. There's divorce and everything. Yes. And there's many other things. They said this and they said um, the Americans took control of the newspapers. As Asahi Shim uh, Asahi Shimbun, Mainichi, my, um, my and um, there is the um, Yomiuri Shimbun. Yeah, I've actually been to these newspaper companies. And so I know Japan pretty well. Anybody who's hearing me talk will say, damn, he really knows what he's talking about. If he knows Asahi Shimbun, Yomiuri Shimbun, Mainichi, and all these newspapers. Yeah, so I'm not just making this up. Yeah, so they were forced to open up. So everybody thinks that in Europe, the changes happened just like that. And in the Hitler book, I've shown how the fashion changes, how they change, separating the families in the schools and the media advertising things. So now Japan's, you know, Japan's population was so high in the 1930s and 30s. And the thing is, there should be at least, you know, several hundred million Japanese today. Yes. But today, there's, um, you know, in the entire island, there's um, about 150 million people. But including illegal immigrants, it could be up to 100. 70, 80 million. They're not even sure. The, um, the data is not um, very accurate, and many people say the government might have falsified it. Yes, but um, the thing is, the birth rate is low. Nobody wants to get married, and the Japanese system was same like the old system. Yes, where you have to have ask the girl's father to get married, and then the Yasukuni shrine. Yeah, the shrine is called the shrine of peace. If anybody studies it, you know, you translate that to Arabic, it means the shrine of salam. Yes, or Islam. Uh -huh. So the thing is, somebody will say, why is he talking about this? Because we can't ignore this. How the hell did the Americans allow, yes, um, um, you know, a Japanese group of people to design this, connected to Mecca, and then they're designing it in the fashion of Mecca? It means there's something going on. They did this on purpose. There's more going on than meets the eye. Same like, the, um, you know, the George, George Floyd. They say he was suffocating for eight right. minutes and 46 seconds. Yeah, and there's uh, many people who've commented on this. Let's see, um, um, they've commented that, um, you know, it happened in um, which city? Minnesota, or where is it? Yeah, Minnesota in America. And they say that sunrise is supposed to be on that day at 8.46 p.m., May the 25th. Yeah, and then many people compare this, and they say, hey, this is connected to Osiris and Seth. Now, uh, let me ask you a question. Everybody knows Vladimir Putin is called Vlad Vladimir Putin. But imagine if I changed his name in the textbooks, yes, and in 100 years' time, I'm saying Vladimir Putin is called um, Vladimir, um, um, Vladimir Bodensky. It's not the same name. Or I changed the name of Donald Trump to Ronald Trump. So now the thing is, anybody who can read even simple basic hieroglyphics, which is um, very similar to Arabic, yeah, will notice it doesn't say Osiris or Osiris at all. It actually says Uzair there. This is very important. It's in my book, Matrix. Yeah, in my book, Matrix, it actually says Uzair. Now the thing is, nobody teaches you this at all. Nobody at all mentions this, except mysteriously, this book called the Quran. 
I'm not supporting the Quran or anything, but um, it's very important because um, um, many people have noticed that the George Floyd killing and the story of Osiris and sunrise and going down and the story with Seth and the Twin Towers and the collapse in the 8.46 a.m. is connected to this Osiris thing. So now the thing is, um, I sent you a copy of the Matrix book, but I sent it you two years ago. I actually sent you a copy of that book. Um, that was the draft version, right. by the way. So if you've shared that and put it online, that's the draft anyway. Yes. So so um, the thing is, um, I'll, I, 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 um, at that time, you know, um, I didn't know you very well, so I didn't send you the updated attacks. Uh, no, the updated version of the book. <laughs> Not attacked. Now, let me tell you what the Quran mysteriously says about Osiris. Yeah. Is, um, so Osiris is called Ozir. Yeah. Ozir. So, um, you know, but um, um, the thing is, um, you know, it's wrong to call him Osiris because they invented this name because the, they, they don't want you to find this information. So now um, the thing is, um, you know, in, um, you know, in the Balkans and even in Hungary, um, the word for Jew in Hungarian is actually um, Zadok, Zidi. Yes. Now, um, many people don't realize this, but this is important. Is the same as Zadok or Sadducees in the Bible, who they claim that um, you know um, that they um, made the arrest warrant and the and the death warrant for Jesus Christ. Yes. And um, Horus is the son of Osiris, Christos, Horustos, Christos. He became so Osiris is the firstborn. Um, it's supposed to be the first ever son of God. Let me um, um, find this. Osiris is the first ever son of God, according to history. Yes. Yeah. He's the first born son of God. Yeah. Let me send you this information. So Osiris. Yeah. Um, you have to read this on Wikipedia and textbooks or you'll never know his name is actually Osir. Yes. Um, it's Hello. Sorry, yes, yes. I dropped the telephone. It's actually Osir. It's not Osiris at all. Yes, I sent you this um, a screenshot from the book. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yes, um, the Matrix. So now um, Osiris, he's the first born son of God. He's the first ever son of God. So now the mysterious thing is, the Quran says something strange. Um, this is ancient Egypt, and Anatoly Fomenko says ancient Egypt is not thousands of years old is from the Middle Ages. Now, the Quran came in the Middle Ages. Now, um, in official history, Anatoly Fomenko says it came towards the end of the Middle Ages, but um, official historians say it was um, towards the beginning of the Middle Ages. Yeah. And um, the thing is that, um, so now um, the Quran says, um, now this is the strange thing. Now, the Quran says something strange. So, of course, everybody says, oh, the Quran got it wrong. So now the thing is the definition of American. Now, at one time, the definition of American was whites only. Then, then slowly people realized that they, they gave a different title and they called them Amerindians. Then they said Native Americans. Now they've accepted their Americans too. Then they tried to say Afro-American or Black Americans, but now every um, you can over, um, because of the racism uh, um, has died now, um, Obama is classified as American instead of a black American or Afro-American, mm -hmm. they tried giving different names. Yes. So the thing is, you know, the meaning of something has changed over time. Yes. yes. The meaning of American has changed over time. Yes. Now, the meaning of France, that you could be um, you could be Polish and born in France. But now you're France, French. Yes. After Poland entered the European Union. Yes. But um, the thing is, before, French actually meant, you know, Mediterranean people, and in the north, um, they were classified as the Germanic. Everybody noticed there were two different races in France at the time. Yeah, so now the thing is, um, the Quran actually makes a claim, and it's turning around and saying, the Jews, the Jews are saying that Uzair is the son of God. Now, uh, um, when you translate Uzair into English, it's actually Ezra. Ezra in the in the Old Testament in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Now, in official history, we cannot find anybody in history called Uzair, and they've said it's Ezra in the Old Testament of the Bible. Yes, and um, the thing is, there is no history in Europe of any Jewish community in Europe saying that Ezra, Uzair is the son of God, until you look at ancient Egypt. So now the strange thing is, um, the Quran is saying these people who've said that these people who are saying that um, 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 
um, Os Osiris or Uzair is the son of God, they're Jews. So now the thing is Anatoly Fomenko points out, yes, and as you could find in many European languages like Hungarian, that um, the word for Jew is actually Zadok or the Sadducees or the priests. Anatoly Fomenko points out that, um, you know, even in Russia and in many Slavic languages, that the word Jew actually officially meant priest. And that's why the Quran differentiates between Jew and um, children of Israel, the tribes of Israel, uh, that it's something else. So now we can see that um, the Quran was correct to say that the priests, these um, um, priests in Egypt have taken um, Uzair or Ezra to be the son of God. Yes. And the thing is, um, you know, they say that um, Seth was um, Seth was fighting Osiris, this mm -hmm. first son of God or Osir. He's fighting him, and this was duplicated in the George Floyd incident, 846, and the Twin Towers, 846. And as we can see, the relationship with Japan, yes? So this is a global war. Nobody seems to understand what this Islam is. So now the thing is, many people, when they're going to say, ah, David keeps repeatedly mentioning the Quran, it's because now, um, the thing is, it's because I didn't mention these things because, you know, the other books, you know, I mentioned the books and somebody's going to say, he's trying to say, read the books. How the hell am I going to put, you know, 200 pages of a book in, in a video? Even yeah, in 10 let me, videos. Let me just say this, if I may, you know, this information is so complex and so on. Many of at least the draft versions to anyone who can look on Odyssey or online anyhow by me and by others. So plenty books can be found if one does a proper search. And aside from that, you know, to shell out a few yeah. dollars for good information, I guess there's ebooks available too, if you enable that on Amazon or people get the books. Yeah. So, you know, this information simply is too complex to explain in any yeah. amount of hours. And you already, I'd also like to point to make, uh, make this clear, you already made it very simple in your books compared to Fomenko. So, you know, anyone yes. can complain as much as they like or you know just do your own research if you can do it better cheaper and more effectively than david oh, the, please do story. please do and share yeah and that's what i gotta say about that please go on thank you yeah. now the uzair story and desra and osiris is not in the matrix book that i sent you yes because at that time that was um you know i was writing the draft and people right. were like pushing me saying send us a copy send us a copy i thought oh god i've not even finished it there's a week to go so um, the thing is, that I had my um, Chinese assistant just forward it to people. So that's why now when you start looking at this, now when you start looking at ancient Egypt and um, the priests who were looking after Osiris, I've sent you a picture. Um, um, you will notice that these priests are dressed exactly the same like um, Vatican priests. Yes. And they're holding a stick. Yes. Now the thing is, they turn around. Um, when you start looking at ancient Egypt, and Seth and everything. This is now um, the mathematics. People cannot understand the mathematics and the gematria. And um, what I'm going to tell you today is so big, it's so unbelievable. Now, the mathematics, um, let me show you. Um, now, in the history books, nobody's ever realized this. Yes, science is called science. Imagine right now I change the languages of the world, every language, and I say, no, you cannot call it science anymore. You've got to call it science, science. People are going to say, who the hell is he? I'll say, you cannot call it history anymore. You got it, you've got to call it history historicus. And you will say, why put history twice? Let's call it science scientificus. Right. Okay. So now um, we are not allowed to call it, um, you know, um, geography. You've got to call it geography geographicus. And you'll say, it's too long. Yeah. You can't call it history. Let's find another subject in school. Um, language. You've got to call it language languiticus. Mm -hmm. you say, what's he done so now do you know what they did with the word matter math tick mm -hmm. ticus mm -hmm. it's they've repeated the word maths twice mathematicus why right. nobody's ever asked this question mm. yes and uh, and the english word anyway anybody who studies too much math yes S is plural for a lot of maths anybody who studies a lot of math will become mad this is what they say. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, um, yes. And um, so, soon you're going to start figuring it out. That's why they turn around. And in English, anyway, they spelt it in Turkish. They spell it uh, Mehmet or Mehmet. And or in some languages, Mohammed. But in English, on purpose, because of English and the word mad, they spelt it Muhammad. Muhammad.
I'm being serious. Soon you're going to start thinking, what the hell is this? So the idea is yeah? that the study of what we today call mathematics. No, don't say it. Don't say it. Let me. <laughs> okay. okay sorry. Um, I, I know you've understood it until um, yes, I send you on. the evidence from ancient Egypt, because this is really important. Yes. Anybody who starts studying ancient Egypt properly is like um, half the hieroglyphics, they haven't translated it. But um, the half that they translated, they did it. It's because it's too obvious and you cannot hide it. Yeah. So um, the thing is, um, let, let, let me um, um, send you that um, information uh, about um, um, the hieroglyphics. Um, let me just send it to you. Um, because soon everybody, everybody will say, why is Mecca in the shape of a cube? But I've got a surprise for everybody. It's not even a cube at all. They're lying on purpose. Yeah, I'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, but um, let me just um, show you about. Um, yeah. Please don't say I cannot find this because this is very important information. I don't want to speculate. I would rather send the exact information so that people can um, um, look for it themselves. Yeah. Now, now in ancient Egypt today, they're going to say it's a god. But there is no evidence it's a god. Now, in the Egyptian word mat or mat, yes, the word mat or emet in Hebrew or mat in Aramaic or, or um, mad, um, maths, it means the truth. It is the god of truth or it is the 100% truth and you cannot deny mat. Mat is the truth in, in um, ancient Egyptian. This yes. is what it is. And yes. you cannot deny it. So now the thing is, yes, um, let me um, just show you. Um, th so the thing is, um, Marth is the truth. And who was fighting against Marth in the Middle Ages? They're going to say this is thousands of years old. But um, the thing is, um, Anatoly Fomenko says the date is the Middle Ages. And then mysteriously, the followers of Mahamath, um, Mahamet, or Mahamet, they invaded Egypt around the time that... Um, they invaded, um, you know, um, European Istanbul, Constantinople, which was known as um, as, as Jerusalem in um, many documents in um, the Middle Ages. But um, let me just um, send you the exact information instead of people thinking, ah, maybe he's speculating. I don't want no speculation. Yeah, half this information is in the book called The Matrix and um, some of the other books it's spread out. You will not know unless if you read um, almost all the books, um, you know, because I can't put all this information. Somebody said, why don't you put it in one book? Impossible to put, you know, several thousand pages of information in one book. Oh, God, is it more towards the end of this folder? But anyway, the thing is, Math is fighting against Seth and Seth kills Osiris. Yes, the first son of God. They turned it into myth. Yes. And the Quran says, why have they turned this? into myths yes um so math yes and so the muslims say mahamat is here mahamat means the great maths the great truth you understand yeah, yes and yes. the ancient egyptian let me send you more about ancient egyptian or um people will not be able to see this um let me find it yeah it's in one of my books but um i've got to see where it exactly is i, I, I would rather send you the um exact information instead of people speculating because you know in the comments section many people say how does he know this and that yeah well the main thing is this mahamat ma means mother now in the english language they changed the english language um, um, um in english um german dutch and all these anglo-saxon languages um anybody can check this the origin of the word mother yes it was actually ma ter yes um, and they changed it into into two two words, yeah. It came from the and they'll they'll try and say um, some. Pro, they use words like proto German, proto Indo European. Right. They added the word ter, but the word um, the word mother was ma or maha. It meant great and mother. Yes. So now um, set was um, I can't find it. So let me check. Was fighting math. Yeah, um, let me um, set fighting. Let's see if I could find it on Wikipedia. It's, it's in one of my books. Yeah, um, Seth was fighting Math. He was fighting um, um, Seth was fighting Math. And um, the thing is, yes, and Math was to do with maths. Yeah, Seth is a god. Um, let me just find it now. 
Um, let me see. Math refers to math refers to truth, order, balance, harmony, and law and justice. So now the strange thing is, um, the Quran is from Mahamath, or the great math, or the great maths. Yes, and the Quran tells you look for nineteen, and nineteen is um, um, the thir thirty three. Because I can't find it, I'll move forward. I don't want to waste um, that much time. Yes, but um, you yeah. had you had this shown the a... nineteen and thirty three with the flower of life. We discussed this in the last interview, I believe. Yeah, and showing the graphics in, in last time. Yes. So now I, um, I'm going to make it a bit more clear. Yes, um, I'm sending you pages from the book um, Matrix. Because in these books, I've done diagrams to make it easy. Now, the flower of life is just geometry. It's showing a design of, of um, when a flower grows from a seed. And a seed, um, who gives life to it? The alpha and the omega. Alpha and omega is al and om. When you combine, combine it, the two letters, when you pronounce it, it makes the sound Allah. It doesn't make Allah how they change the Bible. It's, it's the sound for Allah. And when you pronounce just the letters, it's Allahum. And the Muslims say Allahum, but in the Bible, they've written Elohim on purpose, but it's not letter E. Now, within the flower of life, there's three sixes. And um, I've shown you the colors in yellow, green and red. Yes. And this forms 666. Now, the thing is, when when the flower of life, um, you know, um, inside the flower of life, the chief design that you can see geometrically inside a flower is a cube. Now, this information is very important. As you can see, it's a cube. Now, in three dimensions, when the flower of life is alive, it cannot grow any bigger than um, 33 circles in three dimensions. Now, this is why many organizations, you know, call it Rosicrucians, call it Masons, call it, um, you know, Knights Templar Lodges or whatever you want to call these organizations or call it Shriner organizations, whatever. But um, the thing is. Um, I checked in Google. There was only one video, only one on YouTube. I couldn't find them anymore. I searched for, I gave up after an hour. I couldn't find uh, many websites, maybe four or five out of these so-called millions of websites that actually show that three-dimensionally, the flower of life becomes a cube and you need 33 circles. Now, this is 33 um, circles that overlap because in the flower of life, you combine them and overlap them together. Yes, and um, this is the 33rd degree. Why is it 33rd degree? Because the flower cannot grow any bigger than this. Yes, and um, it cannot grow any bigger. And um, the thing is, um, um, within, within that, yes, you have a cube. Yes, the cube is supposed to be the box with the information of the secrets of how this flower is alive. And that has 33 round balls or spheres that do not overlap. 27, I mean. 33 that overlap and connect, and 27 that don't. So now let's move a bit more forward. And so many people don't know, but um, I'm going to give you precise information today. Yes. Now, the thing is, um, you know, as people know, this is in the book Matrix. So in the book, I put it more precise. If people want precise, they're going to have to read. I'm sorry, I cannot put hundreds and hundreds of pages in a video. I'm trying my best. Yeah. So here's a cube shape. You'll see Jewish people. Um, it says one God. Now, the Muslims have something um, similar, and it's known as a cube, yeah, or Kaaba, the word Kaaba means cube, and this is where we get the word Kabbalah from, Kab, Allah, Kaaba, and cube. So now when you open up the cube, yes, when you break the cube and you're you destroy it, it becomes a cross. So Christianity is when you break it, yes, when you break the flower of life. Yeah, people don't realize this. So now many people say this is related to Kabbalah. So now let me show you what... Um, Kabbalah really is. Many people don't know. And um, the thing is, they tell you Kabbalah came from came from its Jewish mystical tradition of magic. I've sent it to you, the official Wikipedia story. Yeah. Now, the thing is, the Quran says it's the Jews who have taken um, Osiris, Osiris to be the son of God. Who are these Jews? Egyptian priests. Anatoly Fomenko pointed out that the priests were called Jews in Europe. Yes, and you can find this in many languages, like um, Hunnu language, the, the Germans were called Hunnu, and they said it was Zadok, and even in modern Hebrew, it's Zadok are the priests, Sadducees, yes, within the Bible, yes. So now the thing is, um, they turn around and say that it, um, it was these priests who were practicing Kabbalah, yes. Now, the strange thing is, 
there's many um, um, many Jewish groups and Christian groups today. What they will do, they call the demons and the fallen angels or God himself, and they're demanding the, the age of the Messiah. The age of the Messiah is the 33rd degree or the most beautiful age. Um, I'll, explain to you, uh, I'll explain that in a minute why it has to be 33. Now, the thing is, many people don't check this, but according to the Bible, they burnt animals to death in the in the Old Testament temple of Jerusalem, according to the Bible. Mm -hmm. Now, the Muslims say we have we have got the temple of Jerusalem, the temple of God right now in Mecca. Uh, they're not allowed to burn any animals. There's no such thing as a, as an animal sacrifice. I read it in the Quran. They can check it themselves that it says in the Quran, God doesn't want a sacrifice of the blood of an animal. But when you go to Mecca and you um, uh, and you do a sacrifice, God, uh, God says um, it's not a sacrifice. You've got to buy animals and you've got to, um, you know, basically turn them into food. In other words, yeah, every animal we have, we kill them. You know, supermarkets do this. Mm -hmm. Yes, they kill the animals. So now um, when you go to Mecca and if you're trying to say sorry for being selfish or doing wrong things, you've got to um, give these animals to charity as food to the third world. God is not looking for the blood and God is not looking for the animal. He's looking for you must give charity. And by the way, a cow costs about a thousand dollars. Yeah. So um, any of these Muslims who are doing this, you know, if they bought 10 cows and they're giving it charity, they're going to Mecca. Yes. Some people think they're doing some strange rituals there. They're not. I checked it out. Um, I, 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 only, I, I actually didn't realize this properly until only... Um, okay, and just because it year. relates very much and it's such a con uh, contentious topic, could you say anything about uh, halal or kosher and what how ah, you see this um, relates um, um, uh, kosher um, in hebrew of course hebrew they changed it from arabic yeah the, uh, halakhala or halakala um halal allow in english halal allow halal and um haram means you don't allow it in english it's haram but simply it just means that um the quran says Every life is sacred. You cannot take the life of an animal without the permission of God. All you have to say is um, a simple sentence in the name of God. That's it. That's all you say. And then, you know, um, any um, farmer, he can put the animal to death and then, you know, sell the meat. That's all. This is all. So now it, um, the Muslims in their temple in um Mecca, there is no animal sacrifice whatsoever. And I'm, so I've sent you this. Um, I don't. I, I don't want to jump from um, the Kabbalah because the, um, this is very exciting. So now, one, can you believe this? There's people who are praying to the devil and to the demons to say we want you to um, bring the age of the Messiah and to bring the temple. Now the thing is, now the strange thing is, um, I've sent you um, the other part, practical Kabbalah. It is. Um, you will see all these global leaders going to the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. Right. Um, let's see. Let, let me just see. Even the Chinese leader, Chinese um, um, premier Wailing Wall. Most people don't know what this is about. But um, soon they're going to start saying, hey, I saw Vladimir Putin. I saw, um, you know, uh, Trump, um, you know Obama. everybody, everybody goes uh, there. To the wall. So what is this about? Yes, let, uh, let, uh, let me just send you a picture of Donald Trump at the wall. Then people will get the message. Nobody seems to know what this is about. But um, let me just show you what this is about. Soon you'll understand. Yeah, I already sent you the previous page, but I'll send you the previous page again. Kabbalah is, is about magic. Yes, and it's not about normal magic. It's about contacting the fallen angels or who they call the bad angels, the rebels. Yes, the rebels who don't like God. Yes, and calling Satan and the demons. Yes, um, and, and you contact them to learn things, etc. And so global Kabbalah is incomplete without a temple and without burning animals to death in sacrificing in the temple. You see. So now we've got um, these um, temples for um, secret organizations to link with the Kabbalah or they call them mason temples or lodges that are doing temple and um you need this temple do you see what i'm getting at but now let's uh, let's see more about what this kabbalah is 
<laughs> yes, many people don't know this. And um, they claim that Kabbalah came from Spain, but we can't find Spanish history. The Vatican burnt all the Arabic books that the that the that, that um the Spanish Jews had. So now they say it came, and it came from southern France, and in southern France they all mysteriously were the Cathars. Yes. Um, but let's have a look at this. Yes, yeah, so now um, the thing is, they say that the Kabbalah was written in a book called Zohar in Hebrew. But let's have a look. Um, all the Jews in Spain for a thousand years were speaking Arabic. Mysteriously, nobody spoke Hebrew. And Hebrew mysteriously came to life. This is very important. Yeah. So um, now if the Jews were speaking, 90 percent of global Jews were speaking Arabic during the Middle Ages. Yeah. So um, where did this, um, you know, Hebrew Bible come from? Now, everybody will say, why does David keep on bringing in the Quran in Islam? So now it's very important because Kaaba and Allah mysteriously is in Arabic. Yes. And all these world leaders are going there and they're telling us we cannot do global Kabbalah and magic without this temple. And then they're all going to this wall. You know, even the Chinese leaders. Let me send you this, um, you know, Chinese president, because or otherwise no one's going to believe this. Yeah. What the hell is the Chinese leader? doing at the Wailing Wall. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, um, the Chinese premier, it, it just totally doesn't make sense that, um, you know, and um, the thing is, and then anybody who reads the book Illuminati Games <laughs> will notice the mathematic codes in the Hong Kong protests are basically the same as the, um, you know, capital protests and all this, everything else linked with the number 19, which in three dimensions is, um, is, um, what do you call it? What is it? Um, is the thirty third degree? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So now um, the thing is, um, le um, th let me um, show you um, um, what language. This is very important. Um, the thing is now, who practices the Kabbalah today? Many people don't know this. Many Muslim priests practice the Kabbalah. Many Muslim priests. Many Christians practice it. Many Jewish. Um, religious groups practice the Kabbalah. People can check this online. Yes. So the Kabbalah is to do with, um, you know, what they do is they use God's name and they write it down on paper and they use um, gematria and numbers. Many people call it black magic, etc. And they say Romanian villages are famous for it and everything. And the Hungarians refused it in Transylvania. And, um, that, um, um, and many people say they're Romanians. But notice they're called Romans and people call them gypsies, especially the gypsies. But many people don't realize gypsy means Egyptian. Egyptian, you see? Mm -hmm. It came from Egypt. You see? So now the thing is the Cathars were killed in the south of France. Yes, at the time. And they said the Kabbalah came from the south of France. Yes. And, um, you know, Spain. But um, who are these Cathars? They mysteriously turn around and say, the Bible was written by the devil and his followers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and um, but these people, they had the original Torah. So now um, let's have a look at this. Um, let's go a bit further. Let me see now. Um, where is it? Um, let me just find. Uh, I think I've gone past a page, um, gone past a page um, that the Kabbalah only works in. Uh, let me just um, find this. I must have gone past a page. No, I've not gone past it. It means mm. the language. In, ah, yes, this is very important. Now, the Kabbalah could only be practiced in the Hebrew language. That um, in the 16th century, 17th century, all over Europe, it was known that Hebrew was the language to communicate with the, with the demons and the devil. Okay, then, just, you then just briefly to be clear, because I've seen both. Uh, I've seen the Eliza Ben Yehuda, who apparently has created the modern Hebrew script. But then I'd like to point out that maybe, you know, Athanasius Kirchner, he has a book about mm. the underworld, the Mundus Subterranus, or something along those lines. And there mm. at least are lines that are that look like modern Hebrew as well. And now th and this book is supposedly from 1680 or something. So okay, yes. Can you explain no, right, this? Right, let me explain. The Hebrew alphabet and the Hebrew Old Testament and the Mishnah and the Talmud already existed. When um, um, we're talking, um, I'll give you an example now. Imagine right now, you cannot speak, um, you know, Arabic. 
Yes, nor can I. Yes, maybe we know a few basic things. Yeah, I, I know a bit more than basic because I've traveled. And me, I'm really into languages. <clears throat> yeah, but, um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm nowhere near con uh, um, conversation standard. Yeah. So now the thing is, what we do is um, we use dictionaries and we, we, do, we don't talk to any Arabic people. And then what we do is use a few words and then we write a book down in Arabic. Um, without online dictionaries, meaning uh, there's no internet, nothing. Obviously, it's going to be a joke. So now the Hebrew Bible, the Mishnah and the Talmud are actually Arabic words, yes, used in a new alphabet called Hebrew. This is why these books are there from the 16th century. That's why the Hebrew Bible is there from the 16th century. Now, in the 16th century, in the Middle Ages, it was known. It was common knowledge throughout Europe, throughout the Middle East and throughout Asia, not only amongst the Christians, but even amongst the Muslims, that Hebrew was the language of the devil, that you could speak to the demons and the devil in this language. Now, many people today say that this is, the, and the fallen angels, this is the proof that, um, hey, this language came from God. Now, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, um, people who don't like America, yeah, um, um, uh, uh, um, are going to speak English using bad language. Yes? And they're going to be swearing at America. People who don't like um, Japan are going to be using bad language saying, hey, to hell with you, blah, 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 and bad language. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now the thing is, um, the, um, the Muslims have said this for centuries, and in Europe they said it, that um, Hebrew was the language of the devil, or the Muslims said that this is Arabic, but the worst language of Arabic. That's why it's written in the worst form. Yes. Mm -hmm. But th this is not me making it up. This is... You know, European history in Germany, Italy, France, Spain, throughout Europe. Yes, it's, it's, um, they couldn't hide it because it was so widespread. Hebrew was the language of the devil and the language of, of magic, the language that you communicate with the demons. Mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's very important now. Yes, now Hebrew and Aramaic, yeah, and many people say it came from the Middle East, yeah, which is, which is um, correct. It's um, a dialect of it. Um, but Europe had Arabic there anyway. But anyway, now the strange thing is this. The Quran does not mention the fallen angels. Yes. Let's go a step farther. Because soon we'll understand the cube, Kabbalah, and many things. Wouldn't the fallen what? angels be the jinn in the Quran? Or... No, no, no. no, no. The Quran actually says a different story. I've sent it to you now. It turned around and says that, that, um, um, that um, the word jinn, genie, you know, demons, it just means demons. So um, let's leave yeah. it at demons. Um, yeah, um, because there's two types of, um, of jinns, it says that, um, so it, that's going into a deeper level. But let's stick to the basics. Let's speak in English or people will get confused. No point in using half Arabic like jinn or, or um, mm -hmm. yeah, saying Allah when we can use God. So let's use, let's stick to it in English or otherwise it will get difficult. So now the thing is the Quran says the story saying that the demons tried to um, convince King Solomon, but he refused to follow them. Now, the demons um, know um, the information from magic and, and other things that came down, um, information that came down to Babylon or the city of Babel in the land of Babylon. And these angels are called Harut and Marut. Harut, English word heart, Marut means dead, mort, il est mort en français or Latin. Mm -hmm. So these two angels, now the de now these demons are teaching them this information. So now this information is um was written is written in the book of the Kabbalah. It's actually called Zohar. Yes, Zohar is pronounced Ze Zeher uh, amongst the um you know um Sephardi Jews. Yes, or Seher. Um, many um Sephardi Jews openly say Seher, but now in Israel, um the language has been modified, so they pronounce it differently. Now the Quran openly condemns this Seher system. But um, the Zohar is now practiced and is part of Judaism. It used to be rejected uh, under, uh, did, uh, at one time, but now it's uh, become part of the system. So now let's go back to ancient Egypt, because the Quran is, is saying that those people, these priests, are actually Jews. Yes? So the definition of Judah and Israel or Israeli or, um, you know, Levites, each word has a meaning. So the Quranic definition of that story saying that the Jews have taken Ezra or Uzair or Osiri to be the son of God is referring to ancient Egypt. Yes. So now what we will see is that um, 
Um, what you will see is once you get to ancient Egypt, this is what you are going to see. <laughs> now, you're going to find this so funny when you um, read this. Now, the thing is, um, they're going to use modern words and like Osiris. They're going to say in, in Wikipedia and Britannica, they'll say Apophis. Um, there is the, the king of the demons of chaos. Yes. And the, and, the, and the serpent of the devil of chaos, who's doing all this magic. And, you know, he's the serpent, the snake. His name is Papa or Pepe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. A popus, <laughs> even. Yeah, a popus. Yeah, a pope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The pope. And he's the snake. He's the Pepe, the Pepe Papa. Yes, a baby and um, things like this. Yes. So now let's, let's um, have a look at Rome, the Vatican. And there are, um, I've sent you a, um, a photograph of the Orthodox snake and the Catholic snake. So now when the Muslims invaded Istanbul, Jerusalem, and they invaded um, Cairo, Cairo was known as Babylon in the Middle Ages. You'll find um, many maps in the 16th century that shows Cairo. Um, Babel, Babylon is in Cairo. So as you can see, the Papa or the Pepe, yes, uh, Baba, Baby, Pepe, however you want to pronounce it, who is he? Can you see it? The system is not dead. They ran out of Egypt because the Muslims invaded, have taken over Cairo. People mm -hmm. don't realize mm -hmm. this. Same like um, um, the, um, this, um, you know, this religion with the snake called Christianity. They ran out of um, Constantinople. They were defeated. They had to go. Are you beginning to see? And then this is why the, the Quran mysteriously says, um, um, do not, um, it, it, it actually says, it actually says in the Quran, um, let me see now, um, you, you'll find this strange, the timing of the Quran, so we can calculate the timing of the Quran, must have been the Middle Ages, yes, um, you know, must have been the Middle Ages, they say 6th century, but um, um, the um, Anatoly Fomenko puts it forward by a thousand years, the Quran mysteriously says that these Jews and these Christians, the Christians have their son of God, or... Jesus Christos, Christos, and um, um, these are the Christians, and it says the Jews have got Osiri or Osiri, or Osiris as the son of God. And it, do you know what the Quran mysteriously says for that time? It says, do not take these Jews and these Christians as your friends or protectors, because they are friends and protectors to each other. Mm -hmm. You see? Yes. So any so once somebody reads the, the Quran and they, and um, you start looking at history. Um, you know, what they've hidden, then you start to realize what is going on here because they're turning around and saying, no, it's not true. We, and um, the thing is, you can't find this history, but um, let me find more about this math because it's very important. Um, mm, this math thing, because now the thing is in ancient Egypt, in ancient Egypt, it says that Satan, he was um, the only... Um, the, the only thing that can defeat Satan or that can find him is math or maths or the truth. Yes. And then um, the Mahamat is Maha, Maha, Mahamat, Mahamad, Mahamat. Yes. And this is where the name Mahamat came from or Mehemet or, or Diemet. You, are you beginning to see? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me just um, find this information about... Um, from ancient Egypt, or some people think I'm making it up. Yeah, that um, Math was fighting um, Satan. Yeah, um, let me just see. That soon, um, somebody will say, "Ah, is the is the Kaaba a cube?" Um, there's just too much information to give. But damn, let me just. Uh, Okay, then meanwhile, just to be clear, in the book I mentioned by Kirchner, Mundi Subterranei, it actually shows yeah. the, the, what we would call Hebrew script next to the Arab script, actually. So it's like a table where you see the different scripts on the same page, also Greek script. Um, yeah, just to... Ah, yes. Okay. What, what did you find? Is there four languages there? Latin, Greek, Hebrew, and Arabic? Exactly. Yes. Latin, oh, Hebrew, I guess. Greek, and... And Arabic. Arabic, exactly, exactly, yes, exactly, yes, exactly. Yeah. How, how do you think I knew? And I don't even know this book. I've, not, I've never had a look. How do you think I knew? Well, because you're aware that those are all Arabic scripts and about the history that happened back then, yeah, I guess. Yeah, the other three are the ones that they invented, Latin, Hebrew, and Greek. Yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, ah, I found it now. 
ancient Egypt. Whoa. Um, yes. If you look on Wikipedia so that people will know I'm not just making this up, look at this. Yeah. So now the thing is, you've got um, Apophis. Yes. He is the snake. Yes. The serpent. Yes. The giant serpent or the pope. Yes. Papa. Baba. And that's where the uh, um, Egyptian word Bibi Habibi comes from. Baba Bibi. And he is fighting against the light and the truth. And the light and the truth is mat or maths. Have, have you found it? Yes, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, and the thing is about these Egyptians, let me just show you that they were doing magic. Um, let me just find, find this. That um, The strange thing is many people don't know that the magic or the lies that they were doing, the lies that, that they were doing, um, it's in the Matrix book. Wait, let me just... Um, Come across this. Um, who was Ezra? Let me see this now. This is all in the book, but um, anyway, let me just show you. Um, the thing is, because people think that they're going to find answers with um, 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 with um, gematria, but um, they're not going to mathematical geometry, mathematical accuracy. Okay. Yes. Now the thing is, so these priests who the Quran says they've taken. Uzeris as the son of God, and they were called Jews in the Quran. Yes, not the modern, um, you know, um, you know, anyone who's classifies himself as the children of Israel. Modern Judaism, um, some people practice, um, you know, the Zohar there, and um, many people don't. Modern, many Muslims practice the Zohar or Seher, many Christians do, you know, for the tree of life. I'll soon explain that. So now, um, check this out. Yes, so there's a Pepi. He's doing all this magic or this pope and the, and the ancient Egyptians for, were known for doing this magic. And, and um, they did this with mathematical precision and they could manipulate words and change words using gematria and mathematics. This is how the Jesuits and the pope changed languages. And these are in my other books. Mm -hmm. Changing languages is in my book called Nazi Germany, which is about Hitler. Nazi Germany and Adolf Hitler. And then many people will think, oh, what's he talking about? Um, they've changed all these languages. But the thing is, they used gematria. So now the thing is, they did it with mathematical precision. And that's why they were fighting. Uh, and they were fighting against math or maths. Yes. So now um, mathematical precision. And that's why everyone's going to say, hey, I found this mathematics in all these events. This, yes. that, everything. Nobody talks about it. And that's why the prophet in Islam, he's called the Muhammad. 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 Do you understand? He's the great mathematics, the great truth. Math means truth. Maths means truth. You cannot challenge maths. The greatest truth. You understand? This is how you will know somebody is a liar. Right. Because in their mathematics, you will know. You will know saying, hey, there's no way this event happened with this mathematical formula, with this code. Either it's a setup or they've been caught. And God's yeah. made sure that they caught. The truth has come out. And that is why, yes, Muhammad. Muhammad. You understand? In mm -hmm. English, they call him Muhammad. Muhammad. You see? And that's why they changed it. From Mahamat to Mat Mat, you understand? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In Latin, you know, ma, ma, you know, in Latin, same like they said Osiris, or like instead of August, it's Augustus. Instead of Septim, September or Septem, it's Septimus. Muhammad would be Mahamaticus. Yeah. You know, Mahamaticus. Mm -hmm. So they changed it to Mathematicus, so that people will not know. Or mathematics was originally Mahamatic. You see, mm -hmm. Mahamat, mm -hmm. Mahamid. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, the more people look at this, the more it becomes um, a bit more clear. That the thing is, you know, this is something international. Yes, that you can see that this is where Japan, all this, all that. What the hell is going on? So now the thing is, let's um, look at more um, about um, um, what's going on. So now the thing is, let me send you the coordinates of the Kaaba. Many people don't know this. Now the thing is, when um, the thing is, um, because many people are going to think Metroton, the cube, and the Messiah, the Metroton, the perfect human being. What many people don't know is that the dimensions of the Kaaba are 50 feet by 35 feet by 40 feet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
What does that show you? It's is it a cube? cube? It's, it's not a. It's not, it's a, not a cube yeah. at all. They're lying. So now the thing is, um, the thing is, um, um, there were um in Kaaba and Allah in um, Arabic in the Quran, he, he pronounces it. Modern Muslims pronounce it as Kibala, not Kabbalah. So now the thing is, it is not a cube at all. Yeah, a cube should be 50 by 50 by 50. Or um, I'm sending you this so that people will know clearly. Or 35 by 35 by 35 or 40 by 40 by 40. It is not a cube at all. Now, what they've done on purpose. Now, let me show you. Um, now, I made this poster. Believe it or not. Yeah. Um, I, um, I made this poster. Yeah. I, I got my um, secretary to draw it and whatever. Um, and get the things done, get the colors, just to do the simple poster took one hour. It took me one hour. Now, the thing is, you'll say, why have I shared this poster? Now, have a look at these. Nobody is having a look at this. Online, the, this, these posters, if my simple poster took an hour, yeah, how long you took, do you think these took? They're sharing misinformation on purpose to show that the Kaaba in Mecca is a cube. They're deliberately mm -hmm. doing this, in fact when it's not a cube you see so now the thing is what is the kaaba about the muslims do not worship this so now the thing is um there's all these posters do you know what i can't believe i think i'm one of the first people in on earth who's talking about this where are you one billion muslims that um these people are um you know talking about the building that you pray towards um why haven't you spoke up? I hope if any Muslims are listening to this, you know, where the hell are you? Yes, where are you? Why aren't you speaking up, guys? Yes. Um, the thing is, one, the Kaaba is not a cube, and they're sending millions. You've seen these posters shared online. It's been shared by millions, probably a billions by now. Yes, that they're showing the Kaaba is a cube, Saturn, blah, 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 right. and the tree mm -hmm. of life. Yeah, it is just ridiculous. So now let's go more deep into this. Yeah. That um, I can't believe that the Muslims, the Muslims, you know, it seemed like last time you said, why aren't the Muslims talking about yeah. this? Last time, last time, yeah. yeah. And the thing is, you know what? After that, I actually asked a Muslim and I said, um, how come you guys don't talk about it? And that's when, um, you know, um, um, you know, these things that, well, anyway, that's when, um, you know, the Muslims should, um, you know, the Muslims should um, wake up. But um, anyway, online, many people have realized, like, this is Paris. La Grande Arche de la Défense. C'est dans, um, dans Paris, oui. Oui, c'est ça. Oui, il, il y a une cube là-bas, um, dans Paris. And this is in the, um, you know, the business district. You can see it from L'Arc de Triomphe. You can see it from there. And everybody's noticed it's a cube. And there's people who are asking. So now, um, just, just in case people are going to say that... Um, yeah, um, the, in, in my book, um, Ancient Egypt Didn't Exist, or maybe um, some, some, um, some websites call it Ancient Egypt. Um, the book for Ancient Egypt I sent you was the draft. It right. doesn't mention the mathematics at all. Um, um, you know, you took the draft. Um, you know, normally you took the books, you know, um, you know before I even finished them. <laughs> yes. So the thing is, um, um, it, do, it doesn't have all, all the dimensions that are in, in there, but... Um, what was, what was I going to send you about ancient Egypt? Um, I was going to send you something. Ah, yes, the Kaaba. Now, the thing is, at first, this is not important. Yes, the Kaaba in, in a Mecca. Yes, at first, now, this is important. Um, yes, at first, it's not important if we only look at it just from one point of view. Now, the thing is, regardless of whether the Earth is round or flat, yeah, um, the current um, map that they give us, based on flat or round, the coordinates for the north and the south, yes, the North Pole and um, the South Pole, or if you want to say flat Earth or round, it's your choice. It just so happens that the location of Mecca is at the golden mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, uh, this, this is not easy to build a building. But then anything which is at those coordinates Anything else at the same latitude is also at the golden mean. So this does not sound amazing at first. But now we, we've got um, even more problems. Let me show you the coordinates of the Kaaba. Then we will know for a fact that, um, you know, the Kaaba has got nothing to do, nothing to do with um, the Kabbalah. Yes. And then um, because the Quran explains it more. 
Now, the thing is, um, you know, the Muslims know this. I don't know why they're not sharing this. This is um, this information's in my books. I've forgotten which one. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Kaaba um, is that um, this is um, um, the average distance location of the Kaaba or oh, this map. You know, some amateur made it and he's um, he's not um, put the Kaaba properly on this map. Yeah, is it, the average distance is to the edges of the New World continents of um, North America and um, South America uh, um, and Australia. This is one, the location. Mm -hmm. Another fact about the location of the Kaaba is um, it's at the average distance, whether it's a round map or globe or whichever one you want to say, it's at the average distance location at the edges, the outer points of, of Latin America, Latin America North America and mm. Australia and the positions of yes, Antarctica. I was expecting something the like this. The and now I want to see yeah. the third circle for which we don't have a right map yet. <laughs> wait, 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 but now can you see? It's strange that the Kaaba is at the center of the old world and including the new world. And now this gets even worse that even I can't explain this. That um, now we've got more problems. Now the Kaaba, so this means it's at the middle location, average middle of all three, including the, um, you know, um, the thing is um, for the golden mean. Now somebody can say that, um, you know, the pyramids point towards north and it's got a few facts, but the thing is the Kaaba now, once again, it's at the center of the landmass of Antarctica and for um, um, Latin America, North America, and um, Australia as well yeah. from there. And it's not just that, yeah, that somebody will notice that there's something strange. The Muslims talk about Al-Aqsa or Aqsa. Um, the thing is, um, it's in my books, but um, it's not on here. Um, but the Kaaba is at, is at, is at the, um, um, the centre location from, from um, you know, Alaska and the Bering Straits and other things. Basically, it's at the centre of the earth. I'm being serious that, that um, these things. So now another thing that people don't realise is that when you're doing graduation, that these people they don't tell you this now yes and they and um but um, when somebody does graduation last time i talked about basic graduation codes yeah now we'll start going a bit more advanced yes yeah graduation codes is the cube shape so now the thing is now many people will focus on basic graduation so now when you talk about basic graduation you're wearing a cube shape thing but, um, you know, soon you start going to doctors, professors and all these things. So now I'll send you information. That's the basic. Let me send you. Um, we're going a bit more advanced, you know, doctorates, professors. And when you move forward, it is no longer a cube. Yes, it is no longer a cube. And it's based on six. You know, notice the clock is is um, six, 12 and 60 minutes. And then it, it goes on to eight, eight, which is 32. And then you get um, what do you call it? Yes. Now it's going a bit more deeper, as you can see. Yes. Can you see this? Have you found it? Yeah, I didn't notice. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now the thing is, um, you won't understand this unless if somebody understands the Kaaba. This is why in the Kaaba the Muslims um had to learn mathematics, and that's why he was called Mahamat. Yes, Mahamat, and that's why they call him the Great Professor and Prophet. Mahamat. Yes. So now all these people who've been insulting this Mahamat, it just means great maths, this prophet. And they have no idea what Islam is about. Yeah. Carry on insulting. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, shall I be honest to you, even I'm convinced, even I don't know how to reject this Mahamat as, as um, uh, that he claimed he is the great prophet or he is the great maths. How, uh, how, how can anybody reject it anymore? Is because there's too there's just too much, yeah. Um, there's just too much. Um, but now let's let's um go on to this um um this thing about the Kaaba. Yes, it's it's, it's it, be, it becomes very difficult to um reject this um Prophet Muhammad because um you know and then um the message he gives like there's no way you can know about Ozair and Osiris and the mathematics and the maths unless if you look at the Quran or, or otherwise you're stuck. You're going to be studying Akhenaten, Aten disk, right. and studying all these other things and the fake things that they've added on, fake hieroglyphics. You're going to be busy studying the coordinates of the pyramids. Duh, how yeah. did they build the pyramids? I don't know. I've read so much. I've watched so many videos for hours, but my brain can't find any information. It's because they've got you stuck. So now the Quran is actually a simple book. 
but um, um, soon we'll have to, I'll have to go through this next time about the Quran because what they've tried tried to do in the written versions of the Quran, yeah, they've, they've tried to, um, it, within the spelling, because they play around with gamatria. What they've mm -hmm. done is played around with the spelling of the Quran in some places. But um, the thing is, because it's an oral book and still the Muslim world is, you know, uh, um, largely poor in many places, you know, they've failed to um, pass these, um, you know, Arabic manuscripts, which they've written. Um, actually, um, a lot of Freemasons, and, um, you know, from other lodges have actually written Qurans in Arabic mm. in the 1920s. Yeah. But um, let me um, um, tell you about about the coordinates of the Kaaba. Now, the thing is, they um, the thing is, um, do you know what? They've turned around and said, we don't know why the Kaaba was built in this location or why it was built in this way. They've been telling us this um, for, um, you know, for many years, and only in the last 10 years, they've openly said that we know. Apart from a few people who managed to bother to study, yes, what they'll notice is that the Arabic books were getting burnt. So anyway, um, this is part of a, an Arabic parchment, and they'll claim it's from, God knows when, 16th century or something, or could be before. But um, as you can see, whoever wrote this wrote this down in a very quick mess. Now, Wikipedia uses this and they say the Kaaba was supposed to be a rectangle and then they built it in the shape of this strange cube. And then on the next on the next thing, you'll notice that one, two, three, four, five, six. You will notice that um, there's a black cube there, which is not a cube. Yeah, it's a rectangle. And yeah. um, the thing is, you'll notice that the clock is around it in six. But the thing is, um, um, it doesn't make it clear there. Now, whoever wrote that wrote that down very fast, almost like that the originals were burnt and they did it in secret. They thought, I've got to preserve this information for future generations. Yeah. And um, the thing is, that they didn't even release this information to the Muslims um, until in the last 10 or 20 years. Now, the thing is, um, the person who wrote it down there saying the Kaaba has also been built in a way so that you can easily find it. Yes. This is another thing. Another strange thing. So the Kaaba now won. Um, they've built it. Um, they've built it to be at the center location, so that you could come from any part of the world. They've made it easy. But um, let me find a, a bit more information. And I'm trying. I, I had this before. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's in my books anyway. Yeah. It's in my books. Um, the thing is, um, I had this before. Um, you know. Um, damn. It's very important to show this or somebody will say, I'm just making this up. <laughs> yeah. Somebody will say he's just making this up. Yeah. But um, we've got documents. Um, you know, historians will try to say it's older, but um, it's probably from the 16th and 17th century that the Muslims were quickly saving this information. Somebody must have been burning Arabic books. Yeah, we know that. It's in um yeah. in Inquisition. Ah, I don't get this. It was supposed to be here. Um, supposed to be here. Um, wait, let me see now. Or otherwise, people will only have half the story. Yes, half the story is no good. Well, the Kaaba. Okay, I'll start without even finding it. Yeah, it's been built um, based on on a car on the cardinal points or the points of a compass. Yes, I found it. And the points of a compass, a star compass, has got 32 points. And um, you'll find this in, um, yeah. And it, and that's why it's um, measurements of 50 by 35 and 40. Yeah. Have you found the pages? Yes. Yeah, yes. 32 points. Now, these 32 points are based on the 32 shining stars in the sky. Yes. And including Polaris. Yes. And the Kaaba, which... Um, um, it's to show that um, people, the stars rotate around Polaris and the people rotate around the Kaaba, yeah? Because the Quran says everything in the universe worships God. Yes, they don't worship Polaris, and you will find this order, like in an atom. That's why, um, you know, a carbon atom, the, the atom of life has got six protons, neutrons, etc., going around, yes. or electrons. I've forgotten which one it is. So now the thing is, um, the Kaaba has got, um, you know, it's not even... A, um, um, perfect sides that it's built to face the 32 stars so that then you could do, navigate and go. So now, as you've noticed, that um, it forms the 32 point compass. Now, and what historians are going to tell us, what they're going to tell us is that the strange maps yeah, from the Middle Ages that are based on the 32 point compass. 
You've heard of these maps, portal on maps? Yes, no? No, I haven't, no. And um, they, they've got the coastline, and it's, ah, yes, I found something, yes. The coastline is very accurate. Yeah, based on 32 points. And they're going to tell us, we don't know who made them, yeah, and things like this. And now the strange thing is, yeah, the 32 points and everything, yes, is based on, on um, the same system that the Kaaba has been built. Or, um, 32 or 33, including the center point of the compass, because people forget the last point of the compass right. is 33. So this is the 33rd degree. This is the secret of the 33. Yes. And the thing is the Kaaba or the cube is built on this. So now the Muslims don't worship this. The Quran says, do not worship this. It says, this is just the beauty of science. The Quran repeats this information. I'm going to say it because many people are going to say, ah, the Muslims are worshipping this. No, they're bound down to the cube. No, they're not. The Muslims worship God. And um, the Muslims turn around and say that I'm um, faced towards this building. That is all. And um, the Quran actually says repeatedly in many places, I was surprised. It doesn't say this in any other religious book, but it repeats and says, study the order in nature, study this, study this mathematics, study that. It just keeps telling you to study. For some reason, I don't know why. It studies, studies the order in the stars and everything, study the order of night and day, study human speech. Some have translated that as languages. But um, the thing is, modern language is not the same as before. Study the feature of human beings, everything. And it says you are going to find an order. And this order shows the signature that there is a creator. Yes. And then it says, worship this creator. Nothing else. The Quran says this clearly. Yes. And mm. the person that they say that the Quran came from was from the great maths. Yeah. Or great math or great truth. Uh, great, great Emmet or the Mahamat, Muhammad Maha, in English. The, Ara the Arabs pronounce it Mahamat or Mahamat or however. Yes, different countries pronounce it in a different way. But um, as you can see, um, you know, this is what mathematics was about. And mathematics in the Middle Ages or until the 17th century was in Arabic. Yes. Um, um, right. Education was in Arabic in Europe. Um, especially mathematics, yes, but, um, specifically mathematics in the Middle Ages um, in Europe were, was in Arabic, yeah. Um, let me find this information and send it to you in case somebody thinks I'm making it up. So in the Middle Ages, it was called mathematics, mahamat. Today it's called matamat, maths, maths, instead of uh, math, math, mathematics, instead of mahemat. You understand? So they changed the word itself, yeah. Let me just send this information or somebody will say I'm making it up. In the Middle Ages, mathematics, science and astronomy was done in Arabic. Yes, in Europe, you know, it doesn't matter where you were. Um, let's see, science. Yes, I found it. Yes, um, here's a link from Cambridge, Un Canterbury University, one of the, one of the um, you know, old and classical universities. Yeah, um, you know, Arabic was the... Uh, it was done, studied in Arabic. Philosophy, you know, to do to do with God, science, mathematics, it was all in Arabic. You can't do it in any other language. Yeah. Until they changed it after the 16th, 17th, 18th century, um, the Arabic language was replaced throughout Europe. Yes. You know, so as you can see, um, you know, so the thing is, you know, Islam is something else and the Kaaba is something else. The Kaaba has got nothing to do with the cube. All those posters are a lie. Where are these Muslims? Why aren't they describing what the Kaaba building actually is? It means that whoever built the Kaaba knew that they built it according to the um, stars so that you can navigate and you can get there. Wait, let me just send the information in case somebody thinks I'm making it up. It's, the Kaaba has been built on the cardinal points so that um, people can navigate and they can actually go there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it means that wherever you are in the world, you can find the Kaaba. Yes. Because... Um, it's at the center of the land, yes? Mm -hmm. Or they're going to tell you on Wikipedia the star compass was discovered um, by somebody, you know, in the Pacific, you know, Polynesia, yes, um, in the 20th century. <laughs> this is what they're going to tell you. Let me see now. Star compass. Oh, yeah, let me just find it. Now, this is what they're going to tell you. But obviously, yes, if the Muslims had already put the car bar down and, and said this, um, then it means... Um, the Muslims um, did it first. Let's see now. S star compass. Um, 
Polynesia. I mean, even here, at least the usage of Arabic numerals is still official. You know, we still use Arabic numerals. At least it's what they say. So, which is an obvious. Yeah, the modern day star compass. Yeah, based on the stars, was developed by Nio Thompson or something. You know, 1950s, 60s. It doesn't say the date, but it's in the 20th century. And then they'll say, you know, the and before that, the origins, ancient China, some fake history. Let me see now. What century did this Naya Thompson live in? Yeah. Star compass date, or otherwise somebody's going to think it's recent. Uh, um, somebody will think this person lived centuries ago. Um, but it's in the 20th century, between, ah, uh, they say 1985. Oh, I cannot believe this. Yeah. When we can actually see the Kaaba has been built based on the based on coordinates that are based on the star compass. Mm. Yeah. So of course, of course, you know they're going to say no, no, no. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Oh, is it a coincidence that it's at the golden mean one point six one eight? This is impossible. Also, yeah. So now we got a serious problem. So the Kaaba, yeah. Um, the thing is, um, you know, Anatoly Fomenko says it's from the Middle Ages. Official history also says it's the Middle Ages, but um, we don't really know much about this Islam. But the thing is, you know, this Islam is something else, as you are beginning to see. Indeed. Let me just um, send you more information about this, about the mathematics. And people have said that the maths and the gematria is linked to the tree of life. So now, as you can see, the Kaaba is not even a cube. It's different coordinates and the 32 point, 32 point compass and the 360 degrees and the clock and the graduation that you will go higher once you can see the higher level that it's not actually a cube. That's why. When you graduate the first level, you're wearing a cube. And as you grow higher, um, the six-pointed hat. Then when you go even higher, the eight-pointed hat. You're beginning to see the graduation, mm -hmm. yes? Mm -hmm. Now you can see, yes? So the thing is, um, you know, people will have to um, understand these things um, even better. So now many people are going to turn around and say, we studied the Zohar and the Kabbalah because of the Tree of Life, and it's going to help our life, astrology, astronomy, star signs and everything, better health. You know, there's many um, people who were talking about new age science, Scientology right. and anything. I want you to bring a single person, yeah, who managed to save his hair or stop it from growing gray. You, you practitioners of Kabbalah, go and bring me a single woman or a single person who did all these things with the numerology and the astronomy to stop their wrinkles. Did any of you succeed? Did any of them stop themselves from dying? Go and bring those people back from their graves. Let's see. The Quran challenges you about the Kabbalah and the tree of life. Oh, these people um, who were following the tree of life from the Kabbalah. Yeah. It challenges you and says, uh, yeah, you know, uh, um, you know, even I want to know. Yes. Go and bring me one of these people who's been alive for more than a thousand years. Okay, if there's a few of them from drinking blood and they managed to survive a thousand years and they come up to me and say, I'm 600 years old. Sorry, mate. <laughs> it's got to be another way. <laughs> but the, the other question, of course, yeah. would be if that is the goal in itself, longevity. And also, of course, the question, you know, with all the modern civilization, to me, it's obvious we would naturally live a lot longer if you wouldn't live in such a hostile environment, you know, so. Um, the, the, it's, it's not a hostile environment. What? What people don't accept is death is part of life. Who said death is horrible? It is sure. the people who are denying the existence of the 33rd degree, which is the, um, um, uh, the, uh, the information from there, that it shows that there is a universal order. And that is God. Now, let me teach you what is the Kabbalah system or the new world order. The old world order, yeah, was called the golden horde. And they lied and said it's called Golden Horde. It was called Golden Order, the golden coins in Arabic, the golden money. Yeah, they tried their best. Yeah, try your best for health. The Quran says this, try all these things. Do your best. Life is beautiful. Live. But don't start making plans, saying I'm going to live these days. You don't know what could happen to you at any time. That's right. a fact. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so we don't know. This is what the Quran says. But um, let's get down to the Kabbalah. Um, yes, the Kabbalah and the Tree of Life. 
Yeah, because um, there's all these people who, who are going to say, hey, numerology, I found all these amazing numbers. I found my spirit guide, everything. Yeah, let's see how long you're going to live. Yeah, let's see, can you stop your hair from going gray? Oh, yeah, you found your spirit guide. You went there and read the stars and he found a bit of information. Oh, yeah, was it all accurate or was it half accurate? Yes, we all know that these spirit guides get half the information wrong. Yeah, and um, the thing is, um, so now let's see um, what is actually the tree of life. Many people have never studied it. Now, the thing is, this is how we know that Islam is the enemy of the of the New World Order. The New World Order supports Scientology, all these New Age thinking, the Kabbalah, the Zohar, and all these things. The Quran condemns the Zohar. The Quran condemns con um, contacting spirits and demons. Yeah, condemns, you know, um, following the way of these two angels that people say are the two fallen angels. And it says anybody who, who does these things, yeah, um, you know, have heaven and paradise is closed for them. It condemns it. And um, um, the other people um, who follow the Kabbalah, they turn around and say, hey, we can figure out God. What if God is not independent from the universe? Then if we control the universe, we basically become God. Yeah, good luck this with is that. This is the thinking <laughs> of the Kabbalah. Yeah, this is the thinking of the tree of life. Yes? I I'm looking for the tree of life thing now because this is really important. Um, and because the thing is, the strange thing is, I, I, I've almost never met any Muslims to talk about it, um, the Tree of Life and things like that. And um, um, according to uh, um, Wikipedia and everything, it says that the Tree of Life is not mentioned in the Quran and things like this. But um, I was surprised because uh, many people look for, the, look for the Tree of Life in English in the Quran. And of course, you know, in Europe, not everybody speaks English. Some people speak Danish. Some people speak, you know, Dutch. Some people speak, you know, Hungarian. Some people speak Bulgarian. So, well, anyway, um, the tree of life, yeah, um, you know, is based on Zohar and all this mythology and numerology and other things. And what is the tree of life? Um, let me find it now. Let me just find it. Um, because I don't, I don't want to give you the wrong information. I would rather get this correct. The tree of life. Yeah. Can't find it on my computer. Yeah, in the books. I don't know which books. It's in my books anyway. Yes. Tree of life. Um, yeah, let me. Um, uh, tree of life. Well, the tree of life, um, you know, um, let me see now. Yes. So everybody's seen this in the Kabbalah, the spirit whatevers, and people are passing it around, the Metraton and the Markaba and all these things. You've, right. you, I'm sure you've seen all sure, that yes, stuff sure. by now. And you're probably thinking, what is this? And many people, they link it to, you know, the Old Testament, Old Testament Christianity or Old Testament Judaism. Yes. Yeah. Um, let me... Um, I'm trying to find pictures of this so that um, people will know I'm not just making this up. Yeah. And it, it, um, it, it's actually come from the Kabbalah. Yes. So and people will say it's a hermetic tradition and everything. They're just going to be, you know, wasting their time. Let's see if it lets it. Uh, I, I, even I, I say to these people, yeah, let's see how long you're going to live, buddy. Let's see if you're going to live hundreds of years. Did you manage to stop your gray hair? And they say this is from. The, um, um, the, um, the flower of life. It's actually found within the flower of life, tree of life. Um, let me, um, and let me um, find an image and show people. Um, I think it's, um, the tree of life is within the flower of life. Yeah, that um, humans are part of the part of life. Yeah, that um, then people can see it. Yes, found it at last. Yeah, so the, this thing, um, the thing is, um, it's not a joke. It's mysterious that the Quran condemns it. Now, the thing is, and the thing is, um, um, let me just show you. So these people, the real Kabbalah, people will soon start understanding. The Kabbalah, you contact the demons and these, um, the rebel information that, um, you know, these angels gave to do with, some people call it magic. Some people say, um, you know, you met a girl, you want to brainwash her to be yours. 
that means she didn't fall in love with you. Yeah, well, yes. I guess there's a, you know, even because I've, uh, let's say, I know plenty of people also dealing with this. And I just want to say, I think because everything is so convoluted, it's always about the way you approach it. And I'm certain there's many people who want to use it to gain power yeah, over yeah, others. You're you know? reading your palm. Somebody, somebody reads your palm and they get half the information correct. But, you know, many people that said to me, I went to um, one of these spirit people. They read my palm. They said the A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And they say, these things came true. I say, tell me every single thing that they said. I said, oh, yeah, I just remembered. They said um, um, five things that came true and five things that didn't. Right, sure. And they were exactly the opposite. Sure. So, so that means what the hell is going on. So now all of this is to do with the tree of life. Yeah, as you will notice, um, you know, um, in three dimensions, there's 33, 33. And, um, you know, there's 33 major stars. And the thing is, that, um, because... Um, now the stupid thing that people are doing is um let me let me show you let me show um let me show you a picture uh, um a picture of of Earth call it a planet or a plane flat or round whichever one you want yeah this is the stupidity of the people who are following the tree of life look at this picture they want information from the stars in the sky. And they're saying that affects humans because we're we're inside this place called the universe. What about the grass? What about the insects? What about the trees? What about the house? You see, that's why the Kabbalah will always fail. It only has half the mathematics. That's why it's called the great maths, Maha Maths, mother of mathematics, Ma Mat, Mehmet, mm -hmm. mother of mathematics. That's why the information he said must be greater. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it will fail is because you're living inside this. They, um, this is why um, people will point out and say, we're trapped in this cube. And what's his name? Yeah. Everybody will say what um, his name is. Um, you know, um, they say Da Vinci. And they're going to turn and say humans are trapped in this cube. And to get out and to master this cube, you need the 33rd degree. Okay. Let's look at this cube. There's the sky. Yes, you're looking at the stars. What about the grass? What about below the sky? You forgot all this information. So the Kabbalah is not going to work. It's a joke. Yes. So now the thing is, it's a joke. It's half true and it's half a lie. So now the thing is, what is the Kabbalah tree called? Yes. Um, now the thing is, um, the thing is in, in Hebrew, and they decided to call it, um, you know, um, the modern pronunciation, um, yeah, the modern pronunciation is actually, it depends um, if, you, if you are from Poland or if you are from Russia or, or Iran um, or if you are from America, you'll say, it's chaim, it's chaim, it's chaim, you know, or zachaim, zachom. It depends on uh, up to you. So now the thing is, this thing came from the Kabbalah and it's called zachaim. I've sent it to you there. Yes. Now the thing is, Yes, the tree of life. And I've never heard the Muslims talk about this. It's called tree of Zahaim. Yes, I've never heard the Muslims talk about this. So even me, I'm wondering, where are you Muslims? How come you're not talking about this? Where are you Muslims? So now the Quran tells you, um, says this. It tells you, it says that there is a tree. And it's called the tree of Zakum in Arabic pronunciation or Zahaim. Zahaim or Zahaim, depending if you are from Egypt or Tunisia or from Oman or from Libya or Kuwait, you know, it, it, it's a big place. It's same like saying from, from, you know, going from England all the way to Russia, there's all those countries in the middle. So there's the tree of Zahaim and the Quran says that this tree comes out of the bottom of hell. It's the cursed tree. Now, let me tell you what the Quran says about this, because the thing is, they don't tell you this. Now, the strange thing is, I've never I've never heard any Muslim mention this. So why don't they mention this? I have no idea. No idea. Don't ask me this. Mm. So now the thing is, it turned around. Um, this is what the Quran says. Let me just um, send you the verses. Yeah. Um, when I first read it, I thought, what is this tree of Zakhaim? Yes. And um, because, um, you know, the thing is, um, yeah. And then um, you won't know unless if you studied the tree of life in Hebrew. So now it turned around and says, 
This is what it says. It says the tree of, of, of Zachaim in the Quran. It says it is the tree of, of um, you know, the tree of destiny and the, the tree of bitterness. And it says this tree is a test and a trial for the people who are doing bad things and a punishment. So this is a test. You know, imagine you're somebody and you're growing wrinkles and your hair's gone white and you're trying to prevent it. And you've gone to these people, to these healers, nature healers or whatever you're saying. I know this. If it's a natural healer, okay. And he's giving you medicine and natural herbs. Okay, so be it. I'm talking about the new age philosophical thinkers mm -hmm. of these natural healers who are basing it on the Kabbalah and these other thinkings. Yeah. And um, these things. So that uh, um, these things, it turns around and says, it's not going to work. And it says, this is a trial and a test. And this tree is actually coming out of. Yes, the fire of hell. And anybody who is following this, I mean, same like you're eating the fruits from the head of the devils, the demons. Yes, that um, they're telling you the, these things. And it says, and it says that when they die, they're going to eat from this, <laughs> yeah, from this tree. And it says um, they'll be given boiling water with this in in hell. Yes, it, it's it, so. This is what it is. And the thing is, so anybody, yeah, um, if I'm wrong. Please bring me one person from, um, you know, who stopped their hair from growing hay or who didn't die. Yeah. And grew back young after following this tree of Zahaim or the tree of Z uh, um, tree of Zakum or this, um, you know, this tree of life. Yes. And um, it's based on this, you know, the flower of life. And they think all this mathematics and the Quran says don't worship these things. And it says God is outside the universe. Yes. And mm -hmm. within the Zohar and Kabbalah and other texts, you know, that is used within Christianity and um, th some of these Islamic sects. I'm not talking about Islam as a religion. I'm talking the Quran, the book, the oral book. I don't know when this book came. I don't know where it came from, but they're saying this is the book that, um, you know, this man called Maha Maths, or the great maths or the great truth or Maha Met or Maha Emet or Maha Mat. You know, in English, they wrote it, Muhammad, yeah, Muhammad, I, whoever or whatever this person is, yes, and he gave this information. It is very shocking, yes. And the thing is, the Kaaba is not in the shape of a cube. How the, and how the hell they knew the location of this place uh, beats the hell out of me. You know, that it's based so that you can easily find it, you know, um, following the stars that... Um, you know, if you're living at a time where there's no roads, highways or airplane and um, they've come here, I have no idea. Now, um, let's get back to Japan. Yeah. So the mysterious thing is, you know, so people, people. um, Yeah. If you if you look at my book, um, what's that book called? Um, the book is called. Um, we'll finish it off at Japan being the last point. Mm -hmm. The book is called Tata, Tata City. Now, the thing is, um, in Tada City, I talk a little about Japan and in the other books. And um, the thing is, every um, nobody, yeah, they're going to say that thousands of years ago, they're going to say um, there was um, a group of people known as the children of Israel. Yeah, I'm not talking about Judah is supposed to be a tribe. And the evidence shows that the Judah is the priests and they are no tribe of Israel. Yeah. Um, there is no evidence for this, that, that uh, many scholars in Israel and outside Israel have even said there is no evidence for this. Now, the thing is, um, you know, they say that um, here is the um, in Japan, in, in, in many um, festivals, they carry a box called the Mikoshi, which looks like. Yeah. Have you seen that picture? What yeah. does the Mikoshi look like? I don't know the proper term in English, but like where you would carry someone on top of it or inside of it, I guess. Oh, uh, <laughs> but what does it look like in history? Look at the next picture. Okay. The Ark of the Covenant of the Prophet oh, Moses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, before they invented airplanes, because nowadays, you know, people take airplanes. Yes, but um, still the Muslims do this, but um, nobody advertises this. And the thing is, uh, uh, I won't say the word Muslims. Yeah. Um, now, the thing is, everyone said that... Um, the Jews did this, um, you know, or they claim that it's Jews only did this 2000 years ago. But now the strange thing is, yeah, what they don't show you in history. Yes. What they don't tell you. I'm going to send you photographs of this is how the Muslims go to Mecca. Yeah. This is how they go. There is no other civilization that we can see 
and they've told us in storybooks saying they did this you know thousands of years ago who are these people these are muslims throughout the world from different cities that they when they go to mecca that they take the ark of the covenant they've been doing this for centuries at least two three hundred years yeah as far as i can trace back that um these camels they go and inside the box they say we were carrying the books of God. Yeah. And um, what do you call it? You will see them that they will play the trumpets along the way. Look at this picture, the one that I'm sending you at this moment as we're speaking. Yeah. Um, the Muslims are carry, carrying um, the trumpets. Yes. Um, you know, as it's described in the Old Testament. We cannot. And so the thing is, it, it asks the question, this story in the Old Testament, which is the Middle Ages, is this actually they're describing events from thousands of years ago or people going to Mecca um, um, during, the, uh, during the 17th century, 16th century and whenever? Can you mm -hmm. see now? Even in the boats that people are coming from, um, you know, across the sea. Um, yeah. Um, wait, uh, I don't know where that is. Yeah. But even in the paintings, you know, from um, that we can find, um, you know, done by who, um, you know. That um these um pictures that um you know people will try and say these um paintings are older, but um I think they're seventeenth century. They'll say they're older, but um the thing is the Muslims are carrying the Ark of the Covenant, yeah, and all these other things. Now we've got a serious problem. These stories of the Ark of the Covenant, and then they're going to say Star of David. Um, you know they're going to say we found a few coins in in um, the Middle East now to justify this modern state of Israel right. um, um, for politics. Yeah, um, I'm not getting into politics. You know, everybody's got the right to live on this in the world. Uh, I don't believe in these nation state borders. And somebody will say, is he a globalist? I am a Tatarian globalist. <laughs> 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 then nobody can accuse me of being with the new world order because there's crazy people out there who are going to come out with things. So now the thing is this, there's so many coins all over the world, you know, thousands, millions, God knows how many, with Arabic writing with the stars of David. So the history of, of the story of David is, is, is just a scam. And then you just, know, just before we conclude, because I'm sure everybody would ask this in your understanding, then what would be the Ark of the Covenant or the books or the box of God? What would they be carrying? Now, now according to the Bible, according to the Bible, the, bo um, the box in the Temple of Jerusalem is a perfect cube. Now, the thing is, anybody who studies mathematics and checks through the history of graduation and everything else, because they can't change everything. And um, the thing, yes, everybody will notice a cube is not enough. That's why when you graduate, there's the six-pointed hat, then the eight-pointed hat for the 32 stars, for the 33rd degree. Yeah, because including Polaris, there's 33. Yes, this is the greatest science, that humans, the greatest achievement. The Quran says don't worship this. This is not God. God created this system. Yes. Now, the opposition to the Quran, the opposition. Yes. The opposition is they're um, saying we can become like God. Yes. And then they're saying the Messiah will have the attributes of the cube or the metroton, the metroton cube. Islam says no God is beyond this. Now, this is a matter of opinion. And maybe yes. just, just but, to point but I've this, not met God. Right. Huh? Just to point this out in the most basic sense where we could make a, a classification would be the one yeah. worldview, maybe the new world order worldview in a sense, which believes and wants to make everyone believe that life, experience, existence is limited to the material plane or to whatever construct yes, to the 33rd degree and you can't and, go beyond this and That's old it. old islam or however we would want to call it or also many other uh, streams within spiritual systems would clearly state yeah. that there is an there are realms and there is a force that is well beyond what we can perceive yes. here and that there is an yeah. order and why i'm pointing this out is because if that would be to be assumed because it's always about why would someone want to live forever for me, it only makes sense if they are scared that their existence in its totality could be deleted. But if there is a yes. con but if there is some kind of no matter how continuation, a greater order that we cannot fully understand from where we are right now. Yes, the Quran has an answer to this. Mm -hmm. And shall I tell you? Please. Even I don't know how to challenge it. The Quran says, "How can you say that that this greater force or this God doesn't exist 
when you didn't exist in the first place. Where did you come from? Wake up. Right. Yes. Right. Yes, it's simple. He says, he says, how can you deny God when you didn't even exist? Actually, the Quran is a, is a philosophical book. It's not that much of a religious book. Now, the thing is, many people will notice that the, um, the spelling differences in printed versions of the Quran. Yes, um, I'll have to talk about that next time. It's in my books that um, in Egypt, the British occupied Egypt and the French, you know, they say Napoleon, but Napoleon's history is a lie. But we know the colonials were there because they only left in the 1950s, 60s mm -hmm. and 70s in all these Islamic lands. Now, the thing is, Allah's high university, um, the thing is, um, they had official Freemasons as the grand religious priest of um, Egypt. Now, Islam has no priesthood. If anybody goes to Mecca, they'll realize this. There is no priesthood. It's just you and God. Uh -huh. And uh, many of these religions has a priesthood. So Islam is, is directly at war with all these other systems. And the, and the thing is, I don't know why Muslims have never mentioned this, that Islam condemns the um, um, Zahaim, the tree of life. Why Muslims have never mentioned, hey, um, Mecca is located like this. It is not a cube. It has got nothing to do with Metroton or any of these other things. And another thing is, everybody is going to go in their grave. And if people think that this is a joke, yeah, okay, some people will say, I'll get cremated. Okay, okay. Yes, but the, still the thing is, the cremated ashes are not going to end up in the stars. They're going to be on Earth near, um, near the land. If you, even if you say, oh, okay, I've got it on the 20th floor of this building. You're on earth, on the land. Yes, in the end, when that city collapses in a thousand years' time, no city has ever survived forever. Yes, um, you know, you're going to be in the world. Now, the thing is, Muslims pray and they go towards the floor. It is so difficult. I've tried this. Mm -hmm. it's, actually, it's actually difficult. It's actually difficult to think I'm going to touch the head, um, the floor with my head. But the thing is, we are going to be under the floor if we are Western <laughs> people. Now, the thing is, if people want to turn around and say there is no such thing as ethics, morals and anything. OK, if you're trying to deny the past of something to do with um, Moses um, the prophet Moses. OK, then why don't you eat your dogs and cats? We are willing to eat cows and sheep. Mm -hmm. But then you will say uh, we're allowed to eat pork. And then you'll say we've got these Christian traditions. Then why are you keeping half the tradition and denying the rest? Why don't you accept, yes, that in history you once had that total tradition? This is why you don't eat cats and dogs. Whereas in other countries you can go to places in Vietnam, places in China, places in the Philippines where people are just going to eat cats and dogs. Uh, um, and there's a history that in China and in the um, Philippines, in places in Africa, in Latin America, and in Europe, where people have ate humans. Because there is no limit. Where is the limit for morals? Why can't you just eat insects? In Australia, um, I, I saw it on the news where they're saying we're going to give the yeah, children yeah. insects and all mm. these other things, yeah? So the thing is, um, you know, where where is the limit? It's because the limits came from these professors or prophets who said that scientifically this is good for you. That's why we will notice that on average, yes, in these societies where they've um, changed their foods and everything, um, you know, obesity and God mm -hmm. knows all these other mm -hmm. things. Yes. And then, um, you know, God knows what it is. OK, you're living longer. You don't want to die. Let's see who's going to save you. Go ahead with your Zahaim, the tree of life in Hebrew, Zahaim. And yeah, in um, Islam, Zakum. Go ahead. And this is and just what I wanted to say. And saying, Yes, to, yes. just to, to make it very clear, because one would only engage in this and then maybe forego some ethics and so on if one is actually afraid of dying. You know, that's the only thing. Yes. Uh, and if yes, one that is, is yes, that, this is, and then the Quran says this. It gives an example that, um, for example, it says that um, with the children of Moses, I think it is children of um, Israel. There was um, people who betrayed God and Moses and things like that. They betrayed the prophet Moses and um, they wanted life for a thousand years. And as you'll notice that um, it, um, they turn around and say with artificial intelligence, um, you know, we can live a thousand years. Right. And um, they say this, you know this. Yes. You've noticed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And they say that right now, the generation who could live a thousand years has been um, has probably been born. So so the thing is, yeah, it's OK to live a thousand years. 
But why deny? At what deny? expense and why deny death if it is part of life, yeah. if there is a continuum? I mean, let yes. me just ask you straight away. What, what is your individual belief when you are quote unquote dying? Would you say that your existence in some form uh, goes on in your understanding? Now, if I'm going to speak, if I'm going to speak, um, you know, honestly, of mm. course, somebody created this place. I can see that the stars have an order. Of course, it's going round, polaris. It's not magic. It's actually going round. It's actually there. I, I'm not stupid. I can see the, the movement of the sun and the moon. This is no accident. Uh -huh. They're moving around. Nobody's pushing them. They're not just flying around by accident. The blood is going around my body. Who? What force is pushing the blood around my body? Who is controlling that force? Yes. Who is the owner of that force and the creator? Now, the new age theory and the Kabbalistic theory and within, within uh, aspects of Christianity and Judaism and Buddhism and Hinduism and almost all these religions is that you can find the attributes and aspects of God within it. The Quran says, no, God is 100% outside and all God did was exist and didn't exist. God just said, I want it to exist and therefore it existed. Mm -hmm. You just made the command be, and therefore it was. Yeah, um, this is the thing. And, um, you know, in the Quran, it says God is outside existence. And, um, and it says in the same way that God created you right now, if God can create you right now, he will create you again. Mm -hmm. And um, anybody who thinks, um, you, know, um, you know, it's just an accident. They must be blind. They must be blind. They know, they know that there is a creator. And um, the thing is, in the New Age thinking, they're saying that we are the creator. We are God. That's why in the Bible they wrote, God made man in his image. In other words, when you look in the mirror, you're looking at your image. You're looking at God. This is, this is the idea in uh, most religions. But the idea in the Quran is, no, you God created you and God put you here as his representative. Right. And then it turned around and says, your duty is to be good and do all these things, you know, have a beautiful life. Yes. And then the thing is, if you're successful, then you will get more beautiful things. Yes. Mm. So now people can guess and say, I'm going to go from the third dimension to the fourth, fifth, sixth. Carry on imagining. We don't know what the, what the next life will mm. be. They're imagining things. You know, we have got no idea. And some people are trying to imagine heaven. Even Muslims, they've got, uh, I saw some of their videos. They've got um, these people who are using gamatria and these, um, you know, systems linked to the Kabbalah and saying in the next life, you'll have things like this, that. We don't know what it is. Is uh, We don't know what. It does say it's going to be amazing. But we just know some basic things, but uh, the rest is speculation. Right. Speculation is not enough. It's like the Kabbalah is speculation. Yeah, and if you become a master in Kabbalah, yeah, you'll master talking to the demons who will fly up to the stars. And um, the thing is, the Quran explains what's in the stars. It says that beyond there is an assembly and the angels and um, there's information there. That's why some people talk about the Akashic records. Have you heard mm -hmm. of this? Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, nobody mentions this. The Quran says there's an assembly. Um, just um, above the stars. And it says the demons, they try going, go near, they try to go near that assembly, but they've got a limit. They can't go there. Yes, we've got a limit, same like without machinery, we can't fly. Yes, so they've got their limits, their de the demons have, of, uh, of their composition. But that's another long story. Well, anyway, I hope um, that shows why I, I'm... I'm um, the Quran is important because without the Quran, we can't understand what is going on in Japan. Without the Quran, we can't understand what was going on in September the 11th. We can't. Yes. Mm. And it's because we really don't know what's going on. We really don't know what's going on. And then the Quran gives you a, an opposition view. We would have never known about Osiris, Ezra and Dozer without the Quran telling us. So now uh, uh, the final point would be, what is the Quran? Imagine right now, you and me, we know that history is a lie. And we sit down with um, people from all over the world and say, hey, for our grandchildren, we need to save history. Let's start writing down all the scams that they told us in history. Now, what are we going to put down? September the 11th 
was a scam. They made it look like it was airplanes, but it wasn't. Yeah. And then we'll think, ah, John F. Kennedy's assassination, another suspicious event, yeah. write it down. Pearl Harbor, another suspicious event to drag America into the war. Oh, yes, um, the bankers and their financing of the world wars and what happened during the world wars, the Holocaust and what happened to the people of Europe. It's suspicious. Write all this down in a book. Oh, yes, what happened to the Gulf of Tonkin? Yes, Vietnam. Oh, it's a suspicious war. Oh, the weapons of mass destruction. They're lying. They said this. Write this down. Coronavirus. They said uh, millions are dying and millions are going to be dying. And nobody can find these millions who've died. We can't find them. I, I seriously can't find them. I have not found any society where mega millions of people have died. Oh, yeah, in China now, mysteriously, after people have had four or five vaccines, yes. there's something going on. Yes. Yeah, and not only in China, but in Europe as well. But many people are now saying in this winter, oh, this is after the vaccines. So if we're going to do this, um, we're writing a book down of all the conspiracy theories, um, you know, um, the um, the assassination of JFK, um, you know, Bill Gates, how he made his money. He doesn't even look smart. Yeah, so there's many things we're going to say. We'll write them down in a book. Now, the Quran, mysteriously, yes, has all the conspiracy history written down from many parts of the world um, from around three, four hundred years ago, four, five hundred years ago, or the Middle Ages. So this means that the Quran came around that time. The Middle Ages. Yeah, official history says the 6th or 7th century. Fomenko has said um, the timeline is wrong. And he said, um, you know, they've added on a thousand years. Now, these things people can debate and fight themselves. But the thing is, the Quran has the stories of everything that people disputed. Like, for example, the Quran says the crucifixion was basic, basically, you know, an inside job and they made it look like a you know, um, they killed Christ. Yes, same like September the 11th. So now the thing is, it says that um, somebody else died and it made it look like it. Yes, something like that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, um, uh, the thing is, um, that's that's a major conspiracy. Now, so if we're going to write a book down, we'll say September the 11th. Yeah, they made it look like planes. There were no planes. People said there was explosions. So the Quran has got all these conspiracies. And the book, Basically, it talks about the conspiracies in history and all the lies. And then it just focuses on saying there is a God and that um, um, do good things. And it says the good things are is to, is to um, what do you call it, keep a good, keep a relationship with God that the Muslims call prayer. And it says immediately after this is um, charity, regular charity. It repeats those two things again and again. And then it keeps talking about science and saying, go out there yeah, and history. And it just repeats those things in different forms, you know, study the stars, study um, human language and um, study all these things. And you will know the existence of God and these things. So that's what it basically is. It has all the lies in history from that time. Yes. OK, oh, perfect. Um, Raphael, shall, shall we leave it at that or is oh. there anything else? No, that's it for now. Um, th thank you very much as always. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm already curious to see what people think and hopefully everyone, you know, start researching themselves, whatever is possible. This is a collaborative effort. And uh, thank you very much for making it more accessible to, you know, start understanding and connecting all these things that seem to be so far apart, but actually are very much related, as you pointed out. So yeah. thank you. Okay, Raphael, have a great day. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.